fourth episode of What Would You Like to Learn Today, my lecture vlog. Today, I've been asked by not one, but two different people to explain fetishes. Now, the reason I opened with the balloon is that if you had that a certain sort of fetish, that would have gotten you totally hard, or wet, as the case may be, okay? Um, when we're talking about fetishes, we're talking about something that you are into, and I don't just mean like from an intellectual or like spiritual perspective, um, that is something that you're not normally into, okay? And this is where we get into trouble, talking about normality, okay? When I say normal, I mean like from an evolutionary perspective, okay? Um, what are we supposed to be trying to mate with? Um, there's a lot of things in the world that you can uh, rub up on or get close with. Um, and uh, really, only a few of them will get pregnant or get you pregnant, okay? So what we're aiming for is we wanna have penises and vaginas being what we're trying to like get with, okay? Um, now, our bodies have a lot of ways of making this happen, okay? There's certain uh, pheromones, there's all kinds of instinctual stuff, we're kind of, that's what we're supposed to respond to sexually. Um, and we also have a lot of psychological stuff um, that is developed along with our bodies. Um, sort of as our brain is developed and we become intelligent, we've got a lot of psychological programming also that um, is, is there to help us get laid. Okay, and a lot of that has to do with like obsessional thinking and what you're oh, my God, I can't live without you, that kind of romantic stuff, okay? But the problem is that the psychological stuff can sometimes get distracted, okay? And your psychological stuff may end up be trying to get laid with any of these other things, okay? Now here's the thing, we're gonna get a little Venn diagram here. So this is what ideally is supposed to be your sexual turn on, okay? So that's generally accepted to be normal, okay? Um, sometimes you, it may be something you can't get pregnant with, but that's, you know, beside the point, okay? Um, then there's sort of a wider category of things that are sort of well, broadly associated, you know, body parts. It's okay, I mean, like maybe you're into shoulder blades, maybe you're into feet, maybe you're into butts, you know, maybe you like really jacked up dudes. Not me, in other words. Um, so that's okay, you know, uh, we don't really have any problem with that. And really, you know, you could also include like other stuff like boots, leather, fruit, you know, like wearing certain costumes, like whatever, it's, but ultimately it's, you're still like putting a penis in a vagina, you know, or, or you know, whatever, whatever the homosexual equivalent is, okay? Um, now the problem is, what happens when you have a fetish is you ignore the penis in the vagina, okay? And instead, you go after some of the other stuff in the world that isn't related to traditional sexual satisfaction that can result in like reproduction, okay? Now, a lot of these, if you're like really into boobs and you're just like super into boobs, like you can have a boob fetish, but it doesn't really matter, okay? You can just find somebody who's into that, okay? Most of these things, it's okay if you have like, that's your fetish and that's like feet people, you know, people who are like super into boots, like, okay, you find a, you know, a willing partner who's like good game and giving and, uh, and that's fine. The problem is, when you get into things that you're not really supposed to have sex with, that's like, that's not sexy, okay? Um, uh, poop, toy trains, balloons, like, I'm not even kidding, like, there are people out there, you should see some of the porn, um, it's remarkable. Um, frogs and glue, uh, there was an Austrian guy, a Viennese uh, psychologist named Viktor Frankl, who I wish somebody would ask me a question about, um, who had a patient actually who could only get hard when he had not only frogs, but also glue. Something about that union really got him going. Now, the theory is that people develop fetishes uh, because of imprinting that occurs when they like enter sexual maturity. Whatever you happen to be around when you have your first sexual experience, pop your first bone or secrete your first vaginal secretion, is um, sort of what you tended to view as sexy ever after. It's like it imprints in your brain in the same way that like a duckling imprints on its mom or like a lamppost follows it around, okay? Um, so if you happen to be around like some balloons you're like, with a, and you have sex with a clown for the first time, then like maybe you like have a big thing about balloons. Um, I, 
I don't know why you wouldn't have a thing about clowns after that, but, uh, but there you are. Okay, uh, I hope that explains fetishes. Um, so really, the, the real issue is, right, so fetishes is everything in blue. All of these are technically what are termed uh, paraphilias. Um, and this includes like, other weird, um, there's other stuff over here where it's like super not cool, like children and uh, rape and uh, other stuff. So I'm not even getting into that. Those are technically also fetishes, but that's a whole other ballpark. Okay, that's, that's DSM-4 territory. Fetishes in and of themselves are not diagnosable as a uh, psychological malady. Okay, moving on. Uh, the lightning round. <clears throat> Why do TVs and fridges never break? Well, it's because they have very few moving parts. It's all solid state electronics. Um, in the case of the television, in the case of the fridge, it's all uh, ducts, condensers, you know, heat transfer. So uh, really, maybe like a fan belt on the, in the fridge, if you have a really old fridge, or like the buttons on the TV. But who uses buttons? Everybody's got a clicker. All right, why do people sweat when they get nervous? Okay, so um, this is that reptile brain. Whenever you're nervous, your reptile brain is thinking, okay, uh, we're nervous, obviously, we're either about to uh, fuck or fight, so we better like get ready. Um, so it uh, amps up everything, your muscles start getting more energetic, you use the hyper alert, you get like ready to run, ready to fight, ready to fuck, whatever, and that generates a lot of heat. So, uh, so you sweat to dissipate it. Um, yeah, sweating was actually uh, one of the early things that uh, let us be hairless out in the desert, so, um, and nervous also, which is pretty good. We spent a lot of our time out there nervous. Um, astrology. Okay, so, I mean, I could kind of see something to it in the broadest terms, okay? If you just look at, like, back in the day when people would eat different things in the summer than they would in the, in the fall, in the winter, in the spring, you know, maybe if, like, a woman was pregnant and, like, had her third trimester in the winter and was only eating, like, turnips, that would affect what kind of dispositions the kid would have on coming out. Maybe there's some kind of effect. I don't know. I, I could construct a plausible hypothesis scenario for that, okay? But I'm afraid that if we go, uh, if we start talking about planets, and uh, if we start trying to like break it down by month, especially nowadays when everybody eats the same thing all year round anyway, like pizza bagels and, uh, you know, vodka. So uh, it really, I don't think that we can, we can t put too much stock in it. All right. Uh, do I really take showers in the dark? I actually do. Um, I did it because of Governor Patterson, as I mentioned in a previous podcast. I was actually, I just got off work, so, I mean, I was about to take a shower. I mean, if you'd like to watch. If you're into that sort of thing. Um, let's see, let's just get the, uh, let's get the water going. Whoop! Let's get the water going there. Okay. Well, anyway, uh, I hope you've uh, learned something today, and um, please let me know what else you'd like to learn. All right, enjoy the show. Da 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 Just like the river going through the 